Hello, Doha. How's everybody doing? My name is Abla and I'm here with... This is G Valentino. You're back again with 974 Live. Today, we are joined by a very special guest. They have captured the world's attention with just three words. The masjid's open. He's all the way from Georgia, Atlanta. We are here with Musa Abdul Aleem. Thank you for joining us, my man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. So we're going to be playing a game. Okay. okay. We're going to say five words each. Okay. And the first word that comes to your mind, just say it. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, this is not scripted. I have no idea this is coming up. <laughs> just to let y'all know, I do not know what's going on right now. No, okay? he doesn't. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Don't think too much. Straight right, into just it. Straight, yeah? Just straight into it. Boom. Do you want to start, Jerry? Okay, I'll start. Okay. Uh, masjid is open. Oh. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> this guy is good. <laughs> well, next, next word, kata. I love it. Love it. Okay. Basketball. Uh, profession. Hoop finesse. Oh my love, my best friend, my twin. <laughs> we're gonna Hoop get, finesse. We're gonna get more into details about yes, that soon. Absolutely. Um, and Musa Abdul Aleem. Normal guy. Yes. <laughs> normal guy. Such a normal guy who just loves sports. That's just me. Great. Abdul, you wanna go? Yes. Okay. Education. A must. Imperative. Yes. Fame. Ah, uh, not 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 necessary. Not necessary. Money. That's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta have money to live to 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 go out there. Yes, necessary. Yeah. Religion. The most important thing in life. Yes, you gotta have direction in life. You gotta have direction. Yes, religion is beautiful. Mia. Excuse me. Maya. Maya. Oh, so my Maya. other best friend. My sweet little princess daughter. She's gonna be the queen of all the world soon, inshallah. Boom. Inshallah. Inshallah, dear. You survived the word association <laughs> game. Well done. <laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna get we're gonna get into the questions now. Yes. Um, so obviously we came across your story. Uh, we thought what kind of relevant questions we can ask you. The way it's structured is that we're gonna talk about the here and now. So we'll talk about the video. Then we're going to take it back a little bit. Yes. And we're going to talk about your story, um, what you were up to before, and uh, your transition to Qatar, etc. Okay? Okay. Right, question one. Describe the moments when you began to realize that the video was, was going viral or, or it was about to become a big deal. Um, it was the first moment, Ibrahim. It was the first moment when Ashraf, the person that I sent the video to, I'm gonna say his name because I love this brother and I'm gonna put him on blast a little bit. When I put this, put it on my story, I was actually gonna take it off because I thought it was kind of silly. I thought, cause I'm, I'm normally just a goofy guy. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just a fun guy who loves Islam, who loves sports. He's just a normal guy who Shout loves Islam, out. who loves the sport and I love to be myself. I don't like to be anything other than myself. Yeah. So I looked at it, I said, ah, I, I deleted it after Salah. I didn't have enough time to delete it because they had already called the Iqam. I had already ran to the masjid. So I was late at the door and I had to make Salah outside the masjid. So I made a Salah with me and two other brothers. Um, I guess they didn't know the rules either, I don't know. So you um, sent the video at this time? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm running and I'm running and then as soon as I look at it, I closed the phone and I went right into my Salat the Okay, okay. I opened up my phone up and there's, there's people already responding to me and Ashra was the first person who said, listen, can I share this? This is amazing. This is a beautiful video. I was this, like, this oh, is, okay. And that's the oh, reason, wow. that's probably the one of the main reasons why I didn't delete it. This is one of your boys? Uh, he, he's a commentator of the Qatari Basketball okay, Federation. Okay. Yeah. So he knows me very well. He commentates all my games. And he sent me a direct message. He said, Musa, here, here it is. This is, I want to share this on my story on my Facebook. I said, sure. I said, I, in my mind, I was like, why do you want to share this? Just this is, normal story. You want to you you make, make yeah. fun of me or laugh at me? Not, 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 not that I'm saying anything bad, I should have. I'm like, yeah. hmm, what's so significant about this? So I let him share it. And he, and he got, within a few hours, 
10,000 views on his Facebook page alone. Sure. So he was the wow. first one. It was literally over 9,000 views in a few hours. It's just, it's just And that's why I didn't delete it. I was like, wow, what? And then, and then it made me look back at it like, what? what is so important about this? It took me three days to try to figure out why, why people love it. No, I'm serious. I looked back every day. Yeah. I looked at it and said, why do people love this so much? So, you know, it was, it was your feeling. It was the way you were saying it. It's the happiness. It was all the all emotions happened. you showed in that video that had other people watching it just Mashallah. feel the love of the masjid got everyone that was interested oh my god when are the restaurants opening what yeah. is this opening what is this and i'm like and i see this video i'm like i want the masjid to be open that's what i actually really care about Abla. and like i told you i i, I got up and prayed fed and that was because of you and i made dua for you that day oh, that day so because much. of that Mashallah. 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 you guys should have seen my excitement before I went to the machine. That was the that was the yeah. that was the calm down version. Uh, me and wife we were screaming in the apartment. We couldn't no way. Listen, we had no idea June 15th was oh. the opening of the machine. How did no you guys idea. know the machine was open? We heard the come out of nowhere. So Look, it, listen, I'm, I heard I heard the Adhan. Okay. And okay, it's time for Maghrib. So I go, I get my wudu and everything, put my tobo and everything, whatever. And I'm I'm about to make the income. I'm saying Allah like put up. And we hear the Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shalom, Allah Akbar, Shalom, Allah What? That's, that's not the Adhan. Because the Adhan is like, Allah Akbar, 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 You know, so we, when we heard the Iqam, it was short, it was to the point, and that's how Iqam is a call. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shalom, Allah Akbar, you know. What? I said, that's the Iqam, that's the Iqam. I said, wait, wait, what, what do I do? So I ran outside, but I still wasn't 100% convinced that that was the Iqam. Yeah. It could have been anything. It could have been some type of dinner at the... I don't know. I don't know. You know, it could have been anything. No, I, I didn't know at all that the Iqamas were... that the mushrooms were opening. So when I saw the security guard, that's when that you see in the video, I'm asking him, is that... was that the Iqam? Can you please confirm before I run all the way to the masjid, please, okay? Because, you know, I'm going to be sweating all over the place. So, he said, yes, that was the Ikama, bro. I said, yes, so I can buy, I got to go. And that's when I, took, and that's oh when I flipped it. So, I still had no idea that was the Ikama as I'm running and out. And so how were you feeling? Was, like, what were the, I mean... Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 make, make this very short and quick. You just imagine your favorite place in the whole wide world that you go to every day, multiple times a day, gets shut down for three months. And then all of a sudden, it opens up again without you leaving home, without no notification. That's how I felt. So just a picture. And your wife just felt the same. Way. She felt the same. She was kicking me out the house. <laughs> you go to the best you Go to the best Go, go, go. What are you doing? I said, come, my baby. What's going happen for you? Go. You know, she's screaming at me. So she just as excited as me, as me. But yes, so whatever your favorite place is, whether it's a gym, an art museum, a masjid, a, the park, just imagine that place gets shut down that you go to every day, three times a day, five times a day, whatever, and then all of a sudden, without notification, you hear that it's open. That's how it goes. SubhanAllah, that's Masif, man, Masif. SubhanAllah. My next question is, mm -hmm. so how have things been changing after the video? And also, you got verified on Instagram. That blue tick baby. literally changed my life. This whole thing changed my life. And um, I had so many people message me from all around the world. Now I'm Muslim and Muslim. 90% Muslim and 10% non-Muslim. And I had so many people just ex express themselves to me how the video made them feel. And some of them even asked, you know, the background behind it. And um, it really changed my life, man. And being verified, just suddenly, I'm in, by, the, I'm in by itself. By itself, I'm in the hotel room. Wow. And I open up my phone. No messages from Instagram. No email. I, I check my email address. Nothing. nothing. I check my phone. No text messages. And I open up my phone, and it just had a blue check. And I thought it was someone else's phone. I said, "Who's this? Who that? I Who said, that?" And I looked. I said, "That's me." I'm just Yo. going crazy. So me and my wife was running in the hallway of the oh my God. of the hotel, which we didn't get on oh. film. I did not want to get us being that goofy. So we're running with me, my wife, and my daughters running around the hallway. Oh my God, how we beautiful should, we should, is that? We, should, we said, we said, shh, quiet, be quiet, be quiet. 
<laughs> and we take like three or four laps. It's just oh my we had to get the excitement out because we we're so excited. Okay, I'm so it was, happy for it. Like I, I can't believe it. when you said when you posted it on Instagram. I'm like, oh my god, he got verified. Mashallah. Like in a week. I, I thought incredible. maybe you had an agency doing no. it here because now. It, Dude, gee, isn't it so hard to get verified on Instagram right it's now? It's extremely hard. It's so wow. hard. Like it takes it months, 10,000, I don't want to say I'm prices but no no re really and truly like i know people who don't have like a massive following and they're, they're blue tick verified okay but, but what they're having is a serious impact like in society in or... either through like music sport like they're having a big impact so obviously they picked you up and they've been like this guy but i've seen musicians i've seen athletes that don't have it. They don't have it. That I've seen, I've have seen it. followers with 85,000. Yeah. I have friends with 100,000, 150,000, 300,000, and it. they don't have it. Right now, they pay money for it. They pay wow. thousands of money for it. And I ha I know friends of mine who are trying to get it right now, wow. and we're pricing around. So you came in around, we were just That's having this incredible. conversation. That's so, incredible. So, inshallah, like, you deserve it, dude. That's incredible. Because I want to let you... Guys, off subject. I actually found out about you because I follow the ILM. The ILM. 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 Yes, I love them so And much. I was watching it, and I'm like... I don't usually spend time on videos, and I seen your video, and I... Wallahi azim, I teared. And I was like, oh my god, who's this guy? He's so happy about the masjid opening, and I said, I'm like, oh my god, he's in Qatar! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is not London or America. Wow, this is in Qatar. right here. Right? I'm That's... like, I'm gonna go get this guy here. <laughs> and you know what? I was so happy he's in Qatar because this is a place that I really, this is my favorite. Out of country, I'm not sure if that's going to be like uh, a political comment no, because no, I know there's some tension between Qatar and a few other it's, countries. It's our favorite too. Don't worry. <laughs> so, it's all right. It's all right. But I love Qatar. Like there's masajid everywhere. That's number one. It's a Muslim country. It's it's so clean. Um, it's it's financially safe. stable. It's safe. safe. It's yes. organized. I mean, if you look at the view, you can walk anywhere and be safe. Like my wife walks to the store by herself sometimes. Like, baby, you don't have to walk. I just want to walk. It's Qatar. Like, <laughs> so right, so keep right. your car unlocked. Look, my fine. my friend Ahmed Darish, I love you, Habibi. He Aww. came and visited me last yesterday. He left his car on for almost an hour in my while he's in my place. Yeah. At my spot, you cannot do that in America. You know, I had a rental <laughs> car. I, listen, listen. No, for real. I had a rental car stolen from me. My brother had his car stolen when he left the keys in the car. Like, no, within, within a minute, within two minutes in America, you leave your car, you leave your car. No, I'm not exaggerating. I, wallahi, oksan billah, I left my car less than two minutes. Wallahi, I walked, I parked my car, I walked maybe 30, 40 feet this way and turned around and the car was gone. Come on, G, you can't deny it, dude. You're from UK. Yo, listen, it's really, it's really talking real talk. My, my own car was stolen. I'm telling you a true story. But, my, but what happens now is you spend too much time in Qatar, then I go back and then it's like, <laughs> yo, I'm leaving my car open and I'm leaving my wallet there and it's like, yo, where am I? Oh my, you know, like you gotta check yourself. You gotta man. check yourself, man. But listen, that's cool. I like that. Um, anyway, so how are you planning to use this newfound audience, the new platform? Like, where are you trying to take this more? So honestly speaking, where are you, where are you gonna take this? Uh, where are you gonna take the direction with this? You know. I want to. The biggest thing in life to me, which is even bigger than sports, is that one. I really want to take this to a grand scale of teaching people. Mm -hmm. Muslim and non-Muslims, the love of Islam, and that Muslims are peaceful, Muslim Muslims are loving, this yeah. religion is about love and peace. And I want to show that to the world, and I, and I never intended to be a da'i, but mm. the audience came from me loving the going to the masjid. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 100%. So now you have a large amount of people who love and fear Allah SWT that are following me, and I want to take that and keep writing that and teach people sincerely the message of Islam. So just, 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 just showing people the message of Islam. That's it. That's really insightful. You know what I wrote down here? I actually wrote down because we did in business and a lot of our guests are entrepreneurs. So I was like, what business opportunities are you going to seek from here? Mm. But the conversation we had earlier as well, your, your view on that is totally different, no. isn't it? 
No, yeah. It's so not, tell us more. Okay, so for example, um, these t-shirts were given to me as a gift. Um, no intending of selling t-shirts or anything like that. Came by the house, Blue Door Sports provided me these t-shirts. I was very excited, but I had a lot of people message me and tell me, listen, we, where can I get one? I want to buy one. It's in fact, I would, I'd be like, did you just ask about Yeah, one? I want one. I want yeah, she want one too. But I'm saying I don't mind selling them, but I don't want to make a profit off of going to the mushroom. So what are you going to do with the money? So, so what I would love to do with the money, if we were to sell them, was directed to a charity. Sure. So a random charity that 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 is directed and focused on feeding the poor or the needy, of the things of people of less fortunate. So we have so many different countries around the world, Muslim and non-Muslim, but mostly Muslim. They are starving. They're full of starvation. Yes. Mothers are dying, children are dying, and we need to we need to help these people. So th this would be a big impact for them. And sorry to cut you off. And that's to the person who sent me a message on Instagram asking how we can help other countries using this. He just answered it for you. There you go. That's one direct answer. message me. If yes. you have any yes. anything, just hit me up. I'm down for it. It's it's amazing. What sticks out for me really is that you know when when you hear these kind of stories that overnight success or overnight attention, people internalize it and they start, their, their ego boosts and they feel like it was all me. Mm. And, and you, flipped it to, you flipped it around where you're like, I'm gonna use it to, to help others who are less fortunate. So that's a, that's um, a lot, bro. Thank before you. Before I ask you my question that I have here, I wanted to tell you that it's strange and it's not strange. it's beautiful that something like this got viral because nowadays what gets viral is a music video it's a, it's a, a bikinis mm. a, a different kind of things get viral and i'm sure everyone knows what i'm talking about mm -hmm, of course. and when you see something like this go viral and people are actually open-hearted to it and they want to hear about it and they want to see it over and over and over again because it makes them just happy Mm. It made them sure. happy. So you now know sure. that there is people out there for, that need some sort of guidance mm. towards that. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I really yes. think you should also focus on that and, and try somehow, somehow to provide guidance and sh share your love to the Masjid and to Islam with the people. They're, mm. they're waiting for it and that's what they want. Yeah. Someone like me, I would love, Yanni, I would love to hear more about Islam from you, but later on, of course. <laughs> Talk to us about your Masjid is Open campaign with Qatar. Qatar yes, so Bismillah. So the, the, the idea is to um, use this, this wave to help others and find ways to raise money for the Qatar Foundation and they will distribute the, the finances how they, they choose fit. And um, like, like I said before, I'm not, I'm not profiting off of none of this. I don't want to die from any of this. I, I will earn my own money, alhamdulillah. Um, so wh whatever whatever money that comes from the masjid is open, it will, it will, it will go to the, the, the donations, inshallah, the Qatari Foundation, and they, they will find the right way. We don't have any details yet. We haven't really directly one-on-one -on -one spoken to them yet, but I have an idea in the direction that they're, they're trying to go. That's smart, inshallah. I wish you all the best, Thank you so much. Guys. I'm very excited, very excited. Nice. Um, what we're gonna do now is take it back a little bit. Okay. Um, we wanna know who Musa Abdul Aleem really is. You know? Yes. Okay. Like, what's the story? Because to be honest, okay. when I saw the video, like Abdul was saying, we didn't really know like where who is like this guy's got a strong American accent. Yeah. Like is this in Qatar? <laughs> where, where is this? The confusion. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel, I feel like it helped because people are like, yo, you know. <laughs> so it it was perfect. Anyway, so. We're gonna get in, get into, we're gonna get into a little bit of the details in terms of yes. like your story, how how it's you turned up in Qatar. So uh, these questions are a little bit directed towards there. That's fine. So um, where did the name pull up, pull up to success <laughs> come from? Like that's an interesting name, man. When it came down to the name, um, I had no idea what to call what to call my thing. But you know what came to me? Hayya la salah. Come to come to prayer. Come to prayer. Uh, hayya hayya la falah. So come to success. I said, well, let me. How can I like merge those two for basketball and dean? You know. So I said, pull, pull up, up to success. Oh, 
You heard it here first. <laughs> heard it here first. How I put, how I got that name together. So I kind of combined the two with Hayal Hayal Al Falah. So you can it, pull up can be anything. Pull up can be you know arrive at the moment to success. Pull up can be shooting a jump shot if you if you're playing basketball. Pull up can be anything that you want it to be. But you have to be successful at it. So come to success, man. Pull up for success, right? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's pretty special. Work. It's the first time I ever, ever, two years ago, first time I ever put that together. Yeah. Made it <laughs> Is that the first time you've been asked that question? <laughs> very first time. Yes. Very first time anyone's asked me why I chose Pull Up for Success. I think it's very fitting at the moment. <laughs> So tell us why did you move to Qatar and how was the transition? Okay, so um, I was going to play in a few other countries. I had a few options, Saudi, Qatar, I think a couple of ones from Egypt, um, a couple of different leagues, even in South America. I had um, Chile, I had um, one from Uruguay, a couple of from Venezuela. And I chose Qatar because of the transition that I want to make from Qatar to, inshallah, to the Egyptian basketball league, uh, which we're working on right now, which would be great. I don't want to. I don't want to mention the teams that's in negotiation right now for next season. But you know, alhamdulillah, it could it, it could be a very successful move for me. Inshallah. But um, my agency has really advised me to come to Qatar, man, and play in Qatar is a very good league, competitively one of the better um, um, Arab uh, Middle Eastern leagues in all, all the Middle East. And so I, I came, and that that's why I chose Qatar. And um, my agency told me, look, it's a very good life here. Um, it's very clean. They, everything I'm seeing now is what they told me through. Yeah. And how long you've been in Qatar? Since October. So it's been eight months. Wow. Eight months. You're new, fresh. Fresh. Wow. Eight months, and I love it. It, feels really? like, it actually feels like home. Yeah. So we. Uh, so you're telling us that you've been here for eight months. Yes. Um, Obviously, you, your profession here is your professional basketball player. Yes. Um, we just want to know a little bit, like we've got a lot of basketball fans watching, we want to understand the lifestyle um, or like your kind of time, like what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, like what your routine is like. It's a tough routine, subhanAllah. Um, it, 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 it requires a lot of dedication and focus because, you know, the team is relying on you to perform. And so, when a player does, when a, when a player lasts performance on the on the practice court or in the games, you know he, he's he's under he's under fire, under pressure to get cut, mm. and get cut from the team any moment. There's no guaranteed contracts for him, and well, there's very few cases where there are guaranteed contracts, and even with guaranteed contracts, the team can cut you and just give you the money and you you, you go home. Yeah. So no one wants to get cut. That's a terrible feeling. So you you just have to really uh, exert yourself mentally and physically to dedicate yourself. So I have a, I will have a strict schedule. Um, so I will go to sleep at night at a pretty good time, I will, you know, around 10 or 11 o'clock, which is sometimes late. And I will get up, um, have breakfast, maybe do a little small little workout, and then I will take my nap after Dohar, or before Dohar, right before Dohar or after Dohar. And then I will have practice on the game, you see? Okay. But um, I will have to get extra rest because Going to practice is a whole pre preparation, and it's like you know, there's an hour before practice that you're getting to the gym, and then there's stretching when you're there, and then there's the practice. So that that takes a span of maybe five hours out of your day. And, and you gotta eat at a certain time. Oh, you, you have train, to. Yeah. You have to. Every morning I have oatmeal, and I will I will make, mix my oatmeal up with different things. Um, try not to have sugar in the morning at all. No cakes, no none of that in the morning. Um, so I would have oatmeal with honey, with bananas, sometimes I'll throw apples in there. I love oatmeal with dates and that'll give me sustained energy for a long period of time. And then by the time I'm ready to go to the gym, I have me a small lunch and um, I'm ready to go. So, um, Musa, yes. when I posted on Instagram, uh, some people had a few questions and the main question was, were you born Muslim? Yes, alhamdulillah, I was blessed to be born and raised Muslim. My father took his shahada, he became Muslim in 1979. Oh, mashallah. And, and how did he become Muslim? Um, he was influenced by Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. Oh, wow. Yeah, he actually has a picture with Muhammad Ali. He took a picture with Muhammad Ali when he was younger. Wow, okay. He was, he was probably um, in his early 30s when he took the picture with Muhammad Ali. Yeah, we still have it. I wish I could show it to you. It's Send it. <laughs> Send it took me a while to find it. Yeah, enough to come back. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, what is your nationality like exactly? Uh, my origins are I'm full American. I am full American. My, my, I'm African American. Um, and you know, sometimes African Americans we come out different colors, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a little lighter than my dad. My dad is brown skinned African American. And you grew up in Atlanta, Georgia? I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. It's my hometown. Kind of miss you guys in Atlanta. We'll talk about that later, inshallah. Inshallah. And tell us a little bit about your your childhood. I, I understood, I read in your bio that you were homeschooled. Yes. So my dad has, and he, he, he motivated us or he put us in a direction where he wanted us to be away from the dunya as much as possible and to be away from bad influences from going to you know, public schools and private schools. So he, he, he organized an environment for us to be at home. And we, we, we every, every day, every, any, everywhere we were, we had an imam to come to the masjid. That was the first class of the day, what's going on in study. So I know how to read and write Arabic, but I don't know when I learned. I just grew up learning how to read and write it because we had imams from the community come and my father made sure he orchestrated them to come to the house and teach us Quran and um, for one hour every day. And then when we have our regular studies, we have science, math, social studies, just regular um, studies throughout the day, all the way up until my, my senior year in high school. So, wow. Yeah. So you yeah. were homeschooled, homeschooled for from, 12 years? Yes. Would you do the same for your daughter? Absolutely. So Absolutely, because you, you, can teach, you can teach your children what you want them to learn. And they, they, it, but they did, my father did provide other students to come. So my, 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 my father's then wife, uh, Sister Sophia, sound like a I love you, miss you. Uh, she she was a teacher. She was a teacher. She, she taught at several schools and she took her knowledge of teaching and she taught us at home. You're ahead of the game, man. Your parents were ahead of they the game, They were ahead of the game, man. man. My dad didn't play that home, that public school stuff. So he wanted that away from us. You know, he was, he was, uh, he was, he was non-Muslim for, you know, all his life until he turned like 29. And he knows what goes on in public schools. It was, it didn't fit the lifestyle of a Muslim. So he decided to take us out of that environment and keep us in an environment that he can he can control. Yeah. So he controls the influences coming into our minds and coming into our, our intellect. And things Your dad's that super smart. Yeah, he's he's my hero, man. He's I love super you, smart, he's, you know? he's my hero. Call my, him every day. Every yeah, day. My father tried to do the same thing, and instead of homeschooling, he put us in New York City in an Islamic school. So mm. in the middle of New York City, I was in the tra taking trains every day to my school. In a hijab and abaya, wow. it's an Islamic school. Wow. But how did yeah, okay, it, it didn't work out well for me? Nah, it's New York. It's tough. <laughs> not like, after nine. <laughs> yeah, especially now, it's, it's tough in America. It's, yeah, not, it's not easy. It's, hard. It's, it's, it's a challenge. It, well, I, I, you know, yes. I, I, I take my kufi off to the sisters, you know, who, who wear the hijab and stuff in America. It's not that easy, but. I think once once you get accustomed to doing it and accepting how people look at you yeah. and just be yourself and smiling at each other, they they will love you. They will love you. I've got one more question. I want to leave it right through the end. Did you you got something I've got? <laughs> Paper scissors, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, but it's a bit personal. But I want to ask it, and if you don't want to answer, you can cut it off. Alright, cool. Go. Okay, but you can put that on. Shoot, the shoot. Because I can get, I can tell that you guys have been religious and you come from a religious background, and I understand that coming from the states, how it is. How did you meet your wife? Okay, so I met my wife. She was on campus. She was a runner. She was. I, I, I was. So I was in college. She's also an athlete. She's also an athlete, and she's a personal trainer for women. Hey, hey. We're gonna get that out there. We're gonna get that out there soon. She started her virtual training program. It's the most amazing program for women. Really? She sends you um, personalized audio workouts. Wow. Personalized just for you, right to your phone. You can work out whenever you want. Yeah, you know? yeah. Sky yeah. Le lessons on how to be your wife's number one fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> So what? we have yet we have yet to advertise learn, it because G, I did not want I did not want to make this make this wave and an advertising type of platform. So I told her just to wait. She has a few clients here right in Puta. Okay. They love her to death. She sends you like it takes her eight hours per video, so it's very personalized. So she is she's eight hours. It, it, close to it. Like I'm 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 saying between six and eight hours, she's she's busy okay. on the phone. And uh, anyway, um so the story goes, she was non-Muslim before. She wasn't. She was non-Muslim when I met her. So she converted. Yes, and the story goes reverted. like this. Reverted. Yes, reverted. 
So the story goes like this. I'm at USF on the basketball team. Okay. She's a runner. So okay. she's a long distance runner. Okay. We all, all the athletes eat at the cafeteria. Okay. Okay, we all have our cards and we eat for free, eat three, four, five times a day. The most amazing cafeteria <laughs> in the world is USF. Oh my God, it was, it's, it's a palace, okay, for food, right? I'm hungry now. So subhanAllah. <laughs> So before I walk in, I had my boot on. I had my boot. I hurt. I injured my foot. And she, this is my first time I've ever seen her in my life. She said, oh my God, what's wrong with your foot? Oh she didn't say, hi, how are you? She, she didn't know my name. She just said, what's wrong with your foot? Oh my God, are you okay? I said, I said, yes, I'm okay. Thank you very much. And that's it. That was the extent of our conversation for that day. And that was it. Okay. And then, um. I was going into the cafeteria. I said, you know what, you want, you want some food? Are you hungry sitting back in? She said, please. <laughs> so I went inside. She didn't have the unlimited she card. She to say yes. So she didn't have the unlimited card. Okay. Uh -huh. Major key, bring them food. Yeah, bring them food. Bring them food. So yeah. it was, so it ended up being a habit. It ended up being a habit for you me. You guys, listen out there, huh? Food. So that one act, like that one act, like I didn't flirt with her. I wasn't even interested in her, honestly. Like for, for like a what? No, no, for like a what? I didn't see her as that. We didn't, I didn't know her like that. Yeah. yeah. It was just passing by. Let's see. So I, I used to just say, hey, I got you some food today. Oh, here, I got you some food today. And it, and it started every, like that. Every day? Almost every day when I ate, yeah. I saw her and I, I brought her some food. And so what happened was we started talking about, we started talking. And that talking started talking about what? Religion. Religion. So she was a very religious person. She was probably the only one in her family actually going to church and leading church ministers. She was very religious in her mm -hmm. thing. Okay. And next thing you know, I not battled with her, but I made her think about her own religion. And we wow. had religion discussions. She said, wow, this is more, your religion, Islam, is more like Christ than my own. And she, she just, she, she just was like, she just, she opened up her and she said, listen, I want to take a shot after a few months, after maybe one month, two months of talking about Islam. Yeah. And, I, and that blew me away. It blew me away. And I, I, I had to, I had to marry her. It blew me away. For her to just change like that. And she changed, she wore hijab in college. And she, she changed in front of everyone as going to college and going to, to classes and stuff. It blew my way. Seven years now. Wow, well, inshallah. God bless you, sis. Mashallah. <laughs> God bless you, sister. <laughs> best, best wife in the world. And you just, mashallah. I think. can't wait till we meet you and bring you on to our show. You're next. Yes, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Yes. You know, you, you know what? We'll bring I'm both of you it. together, okay, G? Uh, down. Whenever y'all like. Yes, down yes. for it. Yes. Okay, awesome. That's what's my end. You done? Yes, I'm done. Mashallah. <laughs> All right, one more question. What does it feel like to open up Instagram and open up your DM and see Mufti Meng sitting in your DMs, bro? Oh man, I just, and, and, and subhanAllah, you know what? It wasn't a text message, that's what blew my mind away. He sent me a voice message. No! Oh. <laughs> when I heard his voice coming through my phone, you know, we, we don't overpraise nobody. He just yeah, a human being. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he would not he, want to He won't want someone yeah. praising him. But let me tell you something, man. I was excited. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, brother Musa. I hope you're well. Lovely to get to know you guys and nice to be able to communicate with you. May Allah bless you guys. So this is me when I first saw. <laughs> Big day today. For Big you. day today. You guys, and then cap it off with Mufti Meek. Come on, man. It's the best day of the week. Oh and then tonight is Thursday night, which is my best night of the week. Wow. Thursday night is my best night of the week because it sets you up for my birthday of the week, which is Friday. So this is this is Thank you. this is movie night. This is like watching a movie, man. Get out of here. This so is Fridays and the mustards are open. Oh man, this is open. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Musa, yes. Abdul Aleem, listen. Thank you for passing through. Yes. We really appreciate it. Very humble brother, man. Um, listen, you you shared some really insightful stuff. Thank you for that. It was uh, it added a lot of value not only to me and Abla but to our audience as well. Yes. So keep doing what you're doing, bro. Thank keep you so using much. your platform how you're using it. Inshallah, amazing things to come, man. Amazing, amazing things to come. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure. It's been an honor, and I'm so 
proud of you. I have nothing to say. I'm so proud of you, but I'm really happy for you. It, it means a lot coming from thank you. Thank, thank you. And I'm like, really, 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 really wishing you all the best. And do you speak Arabic? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Remember now, the mushroom is over.